In this chapter, we're going to discuss the Oranayer diffuse model. Uh, in the previous chapter, we talked about Cook Torrance, and that was a lighting model that was used to replace the standard blend specular function for objects that were really faceted or, or had a rough surface like metal. And so the, the purpose of uh, the Cook Torrance specular function was to better approximate a metal with really rough uh, micro facets, like we talked about. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about Oren Nayer. And the purpose for Oren Nayer is to replace the standard diffuse lighting function. So up until now, we've been using n dot l, just measuring the angle between the light uh, vector and the normal, and using that for our diffuse lighting. Well, there's some problems with that lighting model. And that's what I want to take a look at now. If we look at this teapot, what I've done is I've got our chapter four shader applied here, which is basically just the standard ambient diffuse and specular. And I went ahead and turned specular color to black, so it turns specular off. So all we're looking at here on this teapot is just our diffuse lighting. Also turned the ambient lighting off. And what you can notice is that this standard N dot L lighting model, uh, which is also called the Lambert lighting model, makes our teapot look perfectly smooth. I've got a white, uh, just a blank white texture in the diffuse and specular slots here, and just a flat normal map. And this lighting model makes our teapot look perfectly smooth. Now there are some objects in the, in the real world that, that are perfectly smooth, um, but most objects, if you get really close up to them, you can see that they're, they're composed of lots of little teeny bumps. And the, the bumps serve to make the surface of the model uh, less smooth. So with this lighting model here, we've got a perfect gradient all the way from, from our surface that's pointing toward the light around to our surface that's pointing away from the light. It's a nice and smooth gradient. Um, but for objects that, that have little teeny bumps on the surface, you end up with a much less uh, smooth gradient. And these little bumps serve to sort of flatten out the lighting um, so it's much less rounded and much less smooth. Now that's what the Oren Nayer lighting model attempts to approximate. So for objects like skin or cloth or clay pots, for example, if you look at them really close up, you can see that their surface is really rough. Like skin has lots of little tiny pores and bumps and blemishes on it. Uh, cloth, of course, is made up of all kinds of little threads, and uh, clay is just, just has a really rough surface. So we want some way of approximating this really rough surface uh, in our lighting model. And that's where the Oren Nayer diffuse function comes in. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is switch my material here, and uh, instead of uh, our blend lighting model, I'm going to add our Oranayer shader, and I'm going to assign that to my teapot. Now, what I've done here, just for the purposes of illustration, is just like our Cook Torrance lighting model, our Oranayer has a roughness value. Right now, the roughness is set to zero, and when you set the Oranayer roughness to zero, what you get is exactly what you get with blend. So here's the blend shader assigned to it, and here's the Oranayer shader assigned to it. There's absolutely no change, right? Well, I need to go ahead and turn up this roughness value. And while and, and so what I did is I animated it. Um, so right here at frame 100, it's going to go up to a roughness value of 1. And I want you to notice what happens to our teapot as I scrub the timeline or, or as I move the roughness value up. I'm just going to drag the timeline here really slow. And you'll notice that now my teapot is much less smooth looking. Um, so if I drag it back, you can see that as I, as I move it, uh, it's getting much more smooth, much more uniform gradient. And as I pull it this way, let's just hit the play button and see. As I pull it this way, uh, there's much more of a, of a roughness going on. So, uh, so basically, the Oren Nayer lighting model is successful 
at imitating surfaces that are much more rough. So if we switch back to the blend lighting model again, you can see you know much more smooth looking surface, and on Oranair, uh, a much more rough looking surface. Now one of the drawbacks to Oranair is that it's really expensive. Uh, let me take a look, or let me pull up Effects Composer here again, and we'll take a look at our code. So just like with the uh, Cook Torrance lighting model, I made a separate function for our Oranayer lighting. So here's the function that does the Oranayer lighting for us. And basically, all of this code replaces n.l in our standard blend lighting model. So I'm passing in our surface normal, our light vector, our view vector, and I'm also passing in uh, n.l, n.v, and our roughness value, just like we did with Cook Torrent. And then there's some crazy math that goes on here, and I'm not going to get into this because it's pretty complex the way these formulas fit together to, uh, to calculate this. But basically, it's, it's flattening out the lighting um, based on the normal, the light vector, and the view vector. Let's jump down here to our pixel shader. Just like before, our vertex shader is exactly the same, and our fragment program is similar. So we, uh, we bring in our color texture and our normal. Now one thing you might notice here is that I've gotten rid of specular, and that's because Oranayer is made for, for surfaces that are rough that aren't specular, but if you wanted to, you would be you know, more than welcome to go and add back in here uh, the specular values and just use the standard blend specular function, um, and you can just add it in here at the bottom as well. Um, so these, these components are kind of mix and match. For example, you could have a shader that used the uh, Cook Torrance specular function. You could have a shader that used uh, the, the Cook Torrance specular function with the, uh, the blend diffuse function, or you could use the uh, Oranayer diffuse function with the blend specular function, or you could use, if you wanted to be really expensive, uh, you could use Oranayer diffuse with the uh, Cook Torrance specular. Of course, that would probably make something kind of crazy, but you know, it's all doable here in the code. And that's one of the points that I really want to stress. What's cool about HLSL is that it's really flexible. All right, so let's get back into here. So we've got our ambient lighting being calculated exactly the way that it was before. Um, but when we get to our diffuse lighting, all we're doing is taking the dot product of n and l, uh, n dot l, and also n dot v, and then we do our Oranayer function. And that is calculating n, l, I mean, we're passing in n, l, v, n dot l, n dot v in our roughness. And then to get our final diffuse color, we're multiplying it by our color texture and also our, our diffuse color. So back here in Max, we're multiplying it by our diffuse texture and our, also our diffuse color. So pretty simple code here. Um, so these three lines are what we're replacing our standard diffuse lighting function with. And then finally, uh, our return color is diffuse plus ambient, and then we multiply by the light color, of course. And so what's making this scene um, appear orange is that I've got, um, just like in my other examples in previous chapters, I've got a slight uh, peachy orange color. Um, so if I were to turn this to white, for example, you know, that color would go away. Uh, so that's how the uh, Oren Nayer lighting function works. Um, and like I said, it serves to make the surface more rough. And uh, it's really good for things like skin and cloth and uh, clay pottery, for example, things that, uh, things that have uh, micro facets or or small bumps on the surface that you want to simulate. Oh, I wanted to talk about performance as well. Like I mentioned before, um, our Oranayer function is pretty expensive. And I want to show you just really quickly here in Effects Composer how you can see the expense of your shader. So if we go under View here and pick Panels, I can pick Shader Performance Panel. And that brings up this, this additional panel here. Uh, on the right hand side and what this is showing me is all of the instructions see how it says pixel shader instructions 58 
this is showing me how many instructions are required uh, to render this shader. And that's quite a few. If we look at our uh, standard blend shader, it's only taking 24 instructions. So the more instructions you send to the video card, the longer it's going to take to to create the colors of each pixel. So if I'm using 24 instructions, that's a lot cheaper than with our Orinator shader where we're getting 58. Now one thing that I want to show you that I had to change is down here in our techniques, for the Orinator shader, I've got our pixel shader instruction, or our pixel shader set to shader model 3. And shader model 3 is only supported on uh, you know, more recent video cards. So if I were to set this to shader model 2, I want to set it to shader model 2 and hit save, and you'll see that I've got an error here. And what it says down here uh, in my error tabs, it says compiled shader uses too many arithmetic instructions, 72. So under shader model 2, my shader compiles to use 72 instructions, which is over the limit. If you're using shader model 2, the limit is 64 instructions. So trying to use the uh, Orin Nayer lighting function with a shader model 2 shader, it's just too expensive for the graphics hardware to handle. And so I have to bump that up to shader model 3. So if I do that, now it compiles. And what you'll notice is that shader model 3 is actually more efficient in compiling. There are a few of our intrinsic functions in HLSL that compile to fewer assembly, lang assembly language instructions. So I actually only end up with 58 under shader model 3. So not only is shader model 3 able to do more instructions than shader model 2, but it also does them uh, using, or it also compiles them more efficiently. Now the downside here is that if you create a shader with shader model 3, uh, it'll support fewer graphics cards out there. Um, so in this case, you're doing an Oranayer shader that needed shader model 3. You might also want to make a second technique that was a cheaper version of the shader that just simply used the, uh, the standard Lambert diffuse model N.L. So like I said, Oranayer is pretty expensive, uses quite a few instructions, but if you can afford it, it gives you really nice results um, for things that need to, to look a little bit less like perfectly smooth and even surfaces, surfaces that need to be a little bit more rough, uh, cloth, skin, and, and clay pottery. So there you go. There's the uh, Oren Nayer lighting model. And what you can do is just copy and paste this function and uh, paste it into to any shader that you need uh, the Oren Nayer lighting model in and just feed it the uh, normal light vector, view vector, n.l, n.v, and roughness. And just like with, uh, just like with our Cook Torrance model, um, for roughness, I just have a, uh, a standard uh, UI element here for defining roughness as uniform across the whole surface. Um, but if you wanted to, you could pass in roughness as a texture instead, which would allow you to paint different areas that were rougher or smoother. And that could be pretty cool. So anyway, there you go, Oranayer lighting model.